Hey YouTube, what's happening? This is Chris from Versus 3D down here at 3D Print in Canada. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of showing you a printer or some models that people printed or how to upgrade something, we talked about it and decided, hey, let's teach you guys a little bit of how to use some software. So today we're going to do, uh, we're going to start a whole series of videos that I'm going to do on designing simple functional items in Fusion 360. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple candy dish vase type thing. I'm gonna go with the assumption that you have a little bit of knowledge of Fusion 360. If you don't, there are tons of other videos that you can find online that are free. You can take some free lessons online just to learn the basics. And I really only use pretty much the basics in this video. So let's go to the screen capture and take a look and see how it was done. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360. So now I've started a new project and named it Vase 1. So. It's gonna be pretty simple to do this project. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a bunch of different sketches and create them at different heights and then merge them together to create the vase. So let's start. We're gonna create a new sketch and we are going to create that sketch on the XY plane. Zoom in a little. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an ob a, a polygon. So I'm gonna start right at that center point drag out and we're going to make it 50 millimeters. So I'm just going to type in 50, six sides and hit enter. And that's all we're going to do for this first sketch. So I'm going to stop sketch and go back to home and zoom out a little bit. Now we're going to create a construction plane. So I have an offset plane set up here as a shortcut. You can just click construct and hit offset plane. So it wants to know where I want to offset it from, the first sketch. We can drag it up, but I want it to be exactly 20 millimeters, so I'm gonna type it in and hit enter. So now I'm gonna click on that plane and hit create sketch. So what we're gonna do now here is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a polygon, same center point, same size, 50 millimeters, six sides. Okay, now I'm gonna hide the first sketch and I'm gonna hit M for move, click on rotate, select everything, select the axis, which is gonna be Z, and then I'm gonna change this to 15 degrees and hit okay. So now I've slightly changed the angle of that. And that's it. Stop sketch. Now you can see the two sketches, one on top of each other. I'll show you the front view. Here we go. Now, again, we're gonna click on the, set, the top sketch, create an offset plane, could drag up or I'm gonna hit 20. Then I'm gonna click on that plane and create a polygon. See where we're going here? Center point. This time I'm gonna go out 60 millimeters. But I wanna make sure I stay right snapped on that line. 60 millimeters. Six sides. Now I'm gonna hide those first two sketches so I don't select them by mistake. I'm gonna hit M for move, select everything, choose my axis, Z, and I'm gonna change that to 30 degrees. Click OK. Stop sketch. Now you can see we're building up layers here because what we're going to do is we're going to use another tool in Fusion that's really cool. So I'm going to make some more layers. So I'm going to click here on this last sketch, 
add a construction plane of 20 millimeters. Select it, hit create sketch. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna create a polygon. Same thing, stretch it out. We're gonna go back to 50 millimeters. We'll hide all these other guys. Move, M, click rotate. Select all these guys here. Choose my axis. And this time it's gonna be 45 degrees. And stop sketch. So now we can see all these layers building up. All right, so again, click, create an offset plane of 20 millimeters. Click on that plane, create sketch. Select the polygon, bring it out 50. I'm gonna hide all these other guys. Okay, so we're gonna hit M for move. I'm gonna click on rotate, and then we'll select all these guys. We'll select the axis, which is still Z, and we'll make that 60 degrees. Okay. We didn't actually really have to do that because 60 degrees is the exact same thing as what it is now. Stop sketch. So now we'll show all of these guys. So now we need a way to join these together. So Fusion has this really great tool called the Loft tool. So under Create, we're gonna create a loft. I actually have it up here in my shortcuts. You can click on anything and make it a shortcut just by pinning it to the toolbar here. So I'm gonna create a loft from this plane to this plane. Then I'm gonna go ahead and create a loft from this plane to this plane. Keep going. And that's our shape. Okay, so now that we have our shape, let's hide all these sketches so you can see what it actually looks like. I'm gonna rotate around a little bit. So you can do this as tall as you want, as high as you want. You can change the diameter of the polygon. You can do all kinds of crazy things. So you can add fillets and chamfers and make it as fancy as you want, but I'm just trying to stay pretty basic here. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can actually print this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna print it in base mode. So I'm gonna hit make, click on the object. I have my output already set to simplify 3D, so I'm gonna send this model right there. And here we go, there it is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add, if you're not familiar with Simplify 3D, I highly recommend it. Um, we're gonna add a process, and I name all my printers after Autobots, don't judge me. We're gonna print this on Jazz, which is an Ender 3, a little modified, but that's okay, you'll see them. And we're gonna go to Layer and use Base Mode but we have to get rid of the top layer, so we'll make that zero. Okay, so we'll center that. And now I'm gonna hit prepare to print. Yes, I wanna print it in base mode, because I told you so. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna switch this to feature type so you can see. So the green is the bottom, and the blue is the outer wall. So now we can print this. And this is what I'm actually going to print, and we'll show you a time lapse of that as well. But we'll just do a quick play. 
so you can see it. All right, and we're done. Okay, so now, anybody who's ever printed in base mode knows that you're printing with typically a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So that means that your vase wall is only 0.4 millimeters thick. So that can really kind of be trouble. I mean, if you want to just put it on a shelf and look at it, it can look really pretty. But if you actually want it to be functional, then that's really not the way it's going to work. So I'm going to show you another trick for a way to print it um, where you can still get your vase and you can still get these really cool shapes, but you can actually make it functional. So. I'm going to go back to Fusion, and I'm going to use another really easy feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of tilt the angle like this a little bit. Now I'm going to go up to the Modify menu, and I'm going to create a shell. So it wants to know where, so I'm going to start that shell right here on the very top. Now it wants to know how thick to make it. So watch what happens here. Once I drag this out, it's basically hollowing out the entire shape. So if I want to make a vase that let's say is, I'm going to go with two millimeters. Now this entire vase is hollow. So to print this, this could actually be used as a functional base or a candy dish or whatever you want it to be. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna export this to Simplify 3D as well. Okay, we're gonna add that process for Jazz, except we're gonna unmodify it. We're gonna take it out of base mode. We're still gonna leave those top solid layers. We're gonna change those back to five. center that. So now you can see we've got an actual base here. Now if we prepare to print this, I'm going to change that to the feature type so you can see green is the solid there. So it's going to print these all nice and solid. I'm not going to go ahead and play this whole thing through. I'm going to just drag it across so you can see. So you can see now it's actually printing two perimeters on the outside, two perimeters on the inside, and it's doing an infill. So printing it this way, it's going to take much longer than printing it the other way. In fact, I will show you the difference. So this one is going to take two hours and 18 minutes, roughly. This one is going to take close to five hours. But it's the difference in quality and the usefulness of the item. So let's go ahead and we'll set this up to print and we'll do a time lapse. And here it is, it's a candy dish. This is nice and solid. I did end up printing the second version, which is the one that I used the shell option on. So you can see this is nice and solid. You can actually use this if you wanted to print it or if you wanted to add more sketches and make it taller you could go as, as high as your printer will allow you to, and you could actually use this as a vase. Um, so here you go. 
I printed this in 3D Printing Canada, um, just regular pink PLA, and it's nice and solid. So that's all there is to it, really. So if you like this video, don't forget to click the, the thumbs up and the subscribe and the thing. And uh, we're gonna do some more of these videos. I think next up, we're gonna do how to do a simple business card holder. Um, what I'd really love is if you have ideas of simple things that you would like to figure out how to design or if you need help, leave a comment down in the thing down there and uh, I'll be able to answer you and hopefully we can do our next video on something you wanna see. Until then, this is Chris from Versus 3D. Take it easy.